Hey guys, uh, I could you comment your names and I will do the register. Got one person so far. Right, um, oh yeah, cool. So we're starting a new topic today. I'll, yeah, give me a sec to do this register and then we'll get started. Who wants to be the moderator this week? Because uh, I'll remove Fifi. Let's go for Becca. Becca, you're the new moderator. Right. Um, where's the thing? There it is. Okay, so we've got Alex, uh, Roddy, Joanne, Becca, Callum, Fifi, uh, Sophie, and Leo. Uh, Caleb, Charlie, and George. Anybody Caleb's there? Cool. Charlie and George, anyone else here? So if you guys want to put a title as Loki, uh, this is the topic we're starting today. And this one, I think this is quite a difficult lecture, to be honest. Um, we'll see how you guys find it. I think it is quite difficult, though. So um, we'll start with the definition of what a locus actually is. So we say... <coughs> A locus. Do any of you guys know actually? Have any of you heard the word locus or loci before? I'll just quickly start a um, Microsoft Teams chat so I can get some feedback from you all. Roddy, no, this is part of part of the complex numbers topic still. That's that thing with stuff on the line and it's distance from the line, like radius by line. That's not, a, well, it is a bad description, but it's not wrong. So, good start there, Joan. Where have you heard of it before? Yeah, so we say a, a locus. It, we we never just have a locus of its own. We say it's the locus of points. Um, one of you's not muted. I don't know. Fifi, I think your uh, mic's on. So a locus of points is a set of points. Alex, your mic's on as well. Um, with a particular property. Cool. Yeah. Um, no, you have to teach you one lesson. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good teacher in year nine. Um, yeah, so locus of points is a set of points that have a particular property. And you might say, but Alex, that's a function. And I would say, no. <laughs> so a function is more an operation that turns a set of numbers into a different set of numbers. Uh, a locus is just a set of points that have a something in common. Um, and we're going to look at a few different types of locus or loci today. Um, but it's different from a function, it's different from a mapping. Functions and mappings turn a set into a different set. Loci are just points that have something in common. It doesn't necessarily have to be a function. Um, in fact, some of the things you look at won't be functions, nor will they be um, mappings. Um, but all the points will have something in common. And we can use complex numbers to represent the locus of points on an argon diagram. Ooh. 
But whenever I say locus, all I mean is points that have something in common. You can kind of think of it like a like a function. Cool. I'm just going to reinvite you guys because uh, half of you haven't joined. So Caleb, Callum, Charlie, George, Leo, could you guys join the? Oh, I'm Becca. Could you guys join the um, Teams chat as well? Cool. All right. So there's our basic definitions. Um, so we're going to look at a few different types of this. This is going to take probably all of today's lecture, possibly tomorrow as well. And I've just dropped my pen. Um, yeah, so we're going to start looking at the, the easiest type, which is um, the locus of points equidistant. from z1 equals x1 plus i y1. I do not. OK, cool. I didn't know that. Thanks, Colin. Uh, George, uh, cool. I will swipe you in. Why are you late, George? All right, so yeah, locus of points equidistant from z1 equals x1 plus i, y1. So if I draw this on an Argand diagram, got our imaginary axes, got our real axes. I'm only going to draw the positive because we're looking at a positive complex number anyway. Um, so z is x in the real direction. Put on either i, y1 and the imaginary. So there's our value z. Um, cool. Right, so we want to talk about the points that are equidistant from this point. So all the other complex numbers that are equidistant from this point. And the way we talk about distance with complex numbers is kind of similar to the way we talk about vectors. So if I had any random point, let's just call this one z. So um, if I label this one z, this is z1. If I label this one z2, or just, just blank z actually. So this could be any point, it could be there. It could be here, it could be here. The way we calculate the distance, which I'm putting in my uh, the way we calculate the distance between two points in a complex plane is we think about it in terms of vectors. So we could imagine z1 is this vector, z is this vector, and to find the distance between them, we could say this is z1. Minus z2. So if I want, sorry, z1 minus z. Yeah, using the triangle or a vector addition, um, the length of this here, we can find that well, it'd actually be the modulus of z1 minus z2, but it's going to be back z plus z1. So that's the point. And we can kind of f use that as the length for any of these points. So any of these points, no matter where z is, will always have the same length. So all the points that kind of um, are equidistant will just be a circle. So I can put in all my z's. And hey, join them up. Eventually, you get a little circle. So, um, what we can say then is the Locus, or the collection of points, of points such that z1, z minus z1 equals r. So that's the length of the um, the distance between the two points is a circle with center. The coordinate center is going to be the coordinates of z1. And the radius will be r, which is the magnitude of the distance between the two points. So uh, we can kind of write that in a more mathematical way and say, given z1 equals x plus x1 plus i y1, the locus of points 
such that z minus z1 equals r. Or we could write that slightly differently. We could write that as z minus x1 r i y1 equals r is a written serenity circle center x1 y1 radius ah. so kind of the bit in red is a more mathematical way of saying the bit in blue cool everyone happy with that so it, it kind of makes more sense when we look at it from an argon diagram but um for the locus of points equidistant from a complex number z1 equals x1 plus i y1, we get this circle. So, for example, I'll just show you guys why this works. If we're saying z minus z1 equals r, z we could say is just, well, x plus i y. Take away z1 would be x1 plus i y1. <coughs> to do the modulus of these, um, we can kind of group our group our reals, group our imaginaries together. So if we group the reals together, x minus x one plus um, i y minus y one equals r. To find the modulus of it, we square the real part, square the imaginary part, and add them together. So we'd get um, x minus x one squared plus y minus y1 squared equals r squared. So you can see the distance between all the points is going to be given by the circle. Oh, I keep throwing my pen on the floor. Ugh. Okay. Cool. All right. Remember that. We're going to come back to that later. Um, that's our first locus. Next one we're going to look at is uh, points equidistant from two different points and then we're going to start looking at some questions. So this is our two second of three different types of loci. And we'll see what you can remember in a minute. Yeah. Cool, All right. Um, this one's quite wordy so bear with me. Might type it, be a bit quicker. This isn't taking much of the last time. So the locus of points in equal distance from two different points, Z1, Z2, um, is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining joining points. So let's draw another argon diagram. So we'll have Z2, Z1, so we've got two different complex points. The locus of the points, or the set of the points that are an equal distance from two points is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment of the two points. So in other words, if you make a perpendicular bisector, all the points on the yellow line are equidistant from Z1 and Z2. So this is our locus. And for the locus of points, we're going to use z equals x plus i y, which describes any point on that line. Think of z equals x plus i y. That's kind of like the blank x and y that we have in an equation of a line or in a, any any function that we have. 
Cool. Um, so we can say, again, more mathematical way of writing this. Um, I will just write this out. The locus of points. Is that That makes sense to everybody. So the symbols there, Z minus Z1, size of Z minus Z1, so the distance between that point and the line is the same as the distance between the second point and any point on our locus. Cool. So those are our first two, two out of three um, locuses. One with the circle, so all the distance from one point, and the other one equidistant from two points. All right, we're going to try some questions. These are pretty tricky. I'm going to leave you guys. Did I swear you? I don't think I did. Did I? Did I? I'm going to rewind and have a look. Um, so we'll try a few questions and see how you guys get on with them. So EG1. I wonder what I did. Um, first question. Uh, given Z satisfies. Z minus four equals five. A sketch sketch the locus. B Satisfy A Cool. So I want you guys to give this a go. First we'll sketch the locus of points. Um, and then find the z values that satisfy those two conditions and then those two conditions. Have a think, which one is it? Is it the circle one or is it the perpendicular bisector one? Sketch it, see how you can uh, get on with this. I'll give you guys five minutes. Comment if you need any hints though, because these are quite hard at first um, until you get the knack of it. So I'll give you guys five minutes to have a think about this now. And comment or comment in the team's chat if you want this one. Cool, time starts now.
Right. So, um, yeah, they, they are tricky at first, but hopefully it will start being pretty clear. So, first bit, sketch the locus of points. I'm going to just make a bit of space. So, let's draw an organ diagram up here. So, we've basically got Z minus Z1 is 5. So, Z1 is just 4. There's no imaginary part. So, complex number Z1 is here. And we want to sketch the locus of points. So that's going to be all the points where the distance from our complex number there is 5. So, that's going to be minus 1 is the furthest there. We're going to get, I'm not drawing this very well, but there'll be another point there. That's our locus there, in the green. Okay, find the values that satisfy both. They're on the, so both of these are on our circle. So you want to find the z values that satisfy on the circle, and the imaginary part is zero. Okay, so the imaginary part being zero, that means it must be this point here, or this point here, which is nice and easy to work out. So one of these points is going to be um, z is minus one. The other point is going to be z is 9. And I can do that just by looking at my sketch. Second bit's a bit harder. Find the points where the real parts are 0. So the real parts being 0 is going to be where it crosses the y-axis. And in order to do that, I actually need to work out what the equation of this circle is so I can find those imaginary numbers. So uh, let's get rid of this one now. So what is the equation of this circle? Well, it's going to be x take 4 plus the y value 0, so just plus y squared, equals 25, or 5 squared. Uh, we want to find what the, x, what the y value is when x is 0, so if we make x 0, oops, I've got squared there, we're going to get 16 plus y squared is 25. So y squared equals 9, so y is plus or minus 3. So the z values is going to be z equals 3i, or z equals minus 3i. If you remember those two values there. So we're kind of using basic coordinate geometry to find things on the complex plane and then just make our answers complex. So we use just a Cartesian circle, found where that would cross, and said, well, We've got factors of y here. Anyone got any questions about this? Because we're going to do we're going to do a few more of these today. Um, but it's a good point. Ask me anything that you're unsure of. Anyone got any questions? I'll just check on the team's chat as well. No, no answers either. Cool. Uh, for the next one, could I have some more comments from you guys? Either say you're stuck. Or send me some pictures of your workings on um, on Teams. No question. Okay, don't get how you got circle equation. Uh, do you get where my locus, where the locus sketch came from? Because if you got the locus sketch, just looking at it, we know the radius of the circle is five, so it's got to be twenty-five. We know the x value of the center is 4, we know the y value of the center is 0, so that's our circle equation. Is that right, Roddy? So I know the center was 4, I know the y value of the center was 0, and I know the radius of the circle is 5. And do another one quickly if you want. If it was um, z mod of z minus two plus three i equals five. If I wanted to draw this and come up with a circle equation, draw what it looks like. Well, that tells me that um, all this stuff here. This is going to be Z1. So Z1 in this case will be 2 and then minus 3i. 
because you've got to change the sign, so we're doing z minus f1. So sketch that, we've got 2, we've got minus 3i here. You know, the radius is 5. It's going to be quite a big circle this time. But then I can turn that into a Cartesian circle. I can say x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared is 25. And I can use that equation to find where it crosses here and, here. and put it in terms of um, my own. Cool, right, let's try another question though. But that's that's basically it. So we're using what we know about um, equidistant points, the locus of points, but don't, don't worry too much about it. It's basically just corner geometry on a complex plane. Right. Page one done. Okay, let's do the next one. This one, a bit trickier. Cool, give me a second to time this up. So, um, Cool, right, three bits. A and B should be alright. C is a lot harder. But if you've got a good sketch, you should be able to work out part C. Alright, give that a go. I'll give you guys six minutes to try this one and then we'll go through it. Please comment if you need help and send me pictures of your answers as well. So the time starts.
um, yeah, I mean, complex numbers, they're, they're very abstract, but they are useful in um, physics. Lots of real, ironically, lots of real stuff can only be modeled using complex numbers. Um, anyway, they're just a different set of numbers. They're nothing, nothing weird. It's just like quantum geometry with a different, with a brand new set of numbers. All right. Um, let's go through this. So I think yeah, A and B are okay. Part C may be a bit more difficult. So uh, sketch the locus of P. So I'm going to do my argon diagram down here. So you've got five. Three I, there we go. Uh, nine is my um, thing. Something like that it should be what you get. I might make it a bit clearer. Yeah. So it should be sat on the axis. All right. So that's the first bit done. I will get rid of all my stuff here now, so I've got so much space. Find the Cartesian equation for locus. That should be all right. So the Cartesian equation is going to be x minus 5 squared plus. Do you know, you've got to change the signs of both of it, because you can imagine it's it's z minus z1. So anything here, you've got to be careful with the sign. So in this case, it was um, z minus 3m minus 5. So both of these bits. You can imagine it's z to take away that in brackets, which should both bits be positive. Does that make sense, guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just you're learning those. That's, that's what learning is, getting things wrong. So plus y take 3i squared. What was it again? Um, was it 3 for the radius? I've rubbed it out. I think it was 3, yeah. So that's my equation. You guys might have the sign wrong by the sounds of it. Just uh, be careful with your sketch. Uh, cool. All right, last bit, which is the hard bit. Find the max value with the argument. So if you look at the sketch, what's the biggest? Can I put myself on it? OK, yeah, so we want the max value of the argument. So look, we could have there, rubbish argument, slightly bigger. The maximum value is going to be the value that goes up here, that's going to be the biggest angle that we can make with our axis. Well, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I wouldn't have done that. I've got it written down here. There's no way I told you. Okay, um, buddy, you must have misunderstood my reply. So, um, yeah, that's the angle there that we're making. <laughs> so it's asking us to find this angle. All right, uh, my sketch is kind of bad. Um, I might just redraw this because I can do a better job with this. Scroll up. Both are. I literally said both are positive, Roddy. It says right there, both are positive. Are both positive? Yes. So um, I think you misunderstood what I said. Anyway, let's uh, let's redraw this. Um, I'll get rid of that as well. Now. Fact, should we grid it up? Let's do it. Look at that. Cool, all right, so it was three and five on it. Um, was it five and three? It was three and five. That's not too bad. Cool. So I said our um, biggest angle is going to be nope. I didn't see that bit. Did you actually ask that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you should have the some up. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't really look properly there. Um, so we're trying to find out what this angle here is. 
And it might be a bit clearer to see now. Um, if we trace a line through the center, we're going to make two right angle triangles like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what, what was it doing? So, yeah, we want to try and find these angles. We know the. So basically, if we find one of these triangles, the angle is going to be the same um, because they're two triangles made with the same hypotenuse. Um, they have the same. The radius is. These bits are the same. This is the same. They're both right angled, so these are similar triangles. So if we work out what one of these angles is, let's work out this one here. Let's call this one theta. Let's just call it phi. That's phi. If we find phi, we can multiply by 2 to find the overall angle, theta. So, um, and I can just use tan. So we know this length here is 3. This length here is 5. So I can say tan phi is going to be 3 over 5. And if I times that thing by if I times theta by two, so I can say phi is arc ten over five, so theta is two arc ten. Damn it. Three over five. Calculate that. Two arc ten over five. And I get 1.08, which is the answer. Cool. All right. Anybody got any questions? Tricky. You only really get that with a sketch. And if your sketch is bad, it's very hard to see that they are similar triangles. But because they share the same hypotenuse and they share the same radius, um, that's why we can do that little trick. The other thing you could do, I suppose, is, um, you, well, this would be horrible, you could come up with a blank line equation, and you could work out the equation of the line that meets a circle once using the discriminant and the height, but that'd be a bit of a nightmare. Good challenge there. All right, um, let's try another one. I got, I think I got two more. Ah, we're going to try one that isn't a circle now because we've done a few of those. So let's try one of these uh, perpendicular bites. Unless you guys want to do another circle, I can try and find another circle. Um, we'll do a perpendicular bisector one, and then maybe we'll come back to circles afterwards. No, maybe we'll do one more circle while it's while the wounds are fresh. Um, let me see if Roddy can work it out. All right, if you guys try this one, it should be easier. Four minutes for this one. Let's see how you do. Starting now.
Right, let's go over this again. So still in you guys again. So <laughs> we're talking about z minus z1 equals 4, yeah? So we're taking away z1. So anything minus sign then z1. So if, uh, up here, if we imagine it's z minus, it's z minus 4. So we can say this is z minus 4. And we've got minus minus to make it 2. Yeah, so this would then be z. So z is 4 and minus 2. No, you can't do this on your calculators. This is basic factorizing and minus signs, guys. Does that make sense? It, you, what you're all thinking is you're imagining there's brackets there. There's not, there's not brackets there, though. It's z minus 4i plus 2. And you've got to say, well, both those signs need to be different because we're taking away the whole thing. Yeah. So my z value is going to be 4i minus 2. Sketch that. So minus 2, 4i, there it is. It's got radius of 4. So it's going to be like that. And the Cartesian would be x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 16. Right, we're going to blast through a few more of these. So let's just change it to, to just state. Let's just sketch the locus for each one. Sketch the locus where. Try this one, two minutes. Come on, guys, you can do this. Signs. Two minutes starting now. All right, um, Caleb, I'll answer your question here rather than type it because I don't want to <laughs> make mistakes with this. Okay, you said add brackets and change the sign in the middle. 
Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes that's true. Not always. I mean, in this, basically, Z minus Z1. Okay? In this case, because both of the signs are negative, we're fine. We don't need to worry about it. We could just take a negative out as a factor. We could rewrite this as Z minus 3i plus 2. Yeah? And then we don't need to worry, because then we've got Z minus Z1. So Z1 is just 3i plus 2. So this looks like 2, 3i, like that. Actually, the radius is 4, so it should be a bit bigger. Something like that. Alex, what have you got? Yeah, right place, not a very good sketch because your radius is 2 by the looks of it, but um, yeah, not not bad. Yeah, should we try one more? Can you guys sketch the locus? And state Cartesian. So again, two minutes, see if you can do it. Every single one of you, give it a go. Now. Right, I see this one. Sorry for you, the last one, the radius should have been two. I was, I was wrong there. I told Alex that it was wrong as well. I squared the wrong thing. Um, okay, so sketch locus of this one. So z equals minus two plus three i. So minus two, three i. There we go. Radius is five, um, like that. I was doing the kind of next bit. Uh, so we should get x my plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 25. Yeah, so the radius is 5, but in a circle equation, remember this is the radius squared there. Is everybody happy with that? Has anyone got any questions? Are you guys ready to move on? Um, anyone got any questions? We'll do one more circle before we move on to the um, perpendicular bisector ones. Everyone okay? 
got it now. Cool. All right, um, next one. Yeah, these are tricky at first. It's just it's a brand new topic and uh, new notations. All right, um, cool. So Z. So a complex number z satisfies that equation. Uh, sketch it and find the minimum maximum values of modulus of z. Tricky. Do a sketch. What is the modulus of z? What does that mean? Remember z is any point on the curve. So what is the minimum max value of z? Um, yeah, give it a go. So I'll give you guys four minutes for this one. Maybe longer. We'll see how you get on with four. Um, I'll give you five. Hit, yeah, five minutes, and we'll see how you go.
Cool, do you guys want a bit longer or are you okay? Um, I'll give you a little bit longer, I've got no answers yet, no rushes. Oh, Alex has answered. Cool, uh, three more minutes to the rest of you then. Alex, I'll have a look at yours now and give you some comments if there's anything wrong. Cool, right, so um, Alex and Fifi, great, 100%. I think you guys have got it. Uh, let's go through this quickly then. So um, Z is going to equal 5i plus 12, or 12 plus 5i really. Um, let's draw it. So there, the circumference is three. <laughs> Something like that. We want to find the min and max values of z. Well, the minimum value of z is going to be the z value closest to the origin. <laughs> max value is going to be the value furthest from the origin. Um, and it'll be going through that point there. So, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought there. Uh, okay, we know. Okay, yeah. If we work out the length of, we know we know the radius is three. If we work out the length to the middle, we can just add three and take three because it's only asking us for the for the length. So the center of the circle we know is five twelve. So we can do five squared plus twelve squared. Square root it, which gives us 13. So the minimum is going to be 10, 13, take away 3, 
and the maximum is going to be 16, which is 13, plus the 3. So well done, you guys who got that. Alright, let's try and get one more done today, which is to do with the um, perpendicular bisector. Cool. Right, can we set to write this one out? So given z minus 3 equals z plus 3. Um, I a sketch the locus and find the Cartesian part B. Don't know why I changed color there. Find the least value of modulus and z. Cool. All right, I'll give you guys five minutes. See if you can get this one done. Um, it's similar to what we've been doing, but we're not looking at circles. We're now looking at perpendicular bisectors and straight lines. So five minutes starting now. Comment if you need any.
Hey, I'm back. Um, yeah, everything broke. Like, the intro plays, but I can't hear it anymore. Um, everything just kind of broke, and I haven't bothered fixing it. So all my shortcuts broken. The air horn's still here, but I can't get it to... Get it to... Uh, it's really big, Sorry, guys. Um, that, sorry. All right, uh, sketch locus, find the Cartesian. Um, cool. So a little bit tricky, well not tricky, different this one I would say. If we sketch the two points, you've got Z uh, equals 3, so that's going to be this point here. And Z equals minus I, which is going to be this point here. So uh, through the middle of this is going to be our perpendicular bisector. So these are the points we want to try and find. I've not really drawn that, that well, but there's our kind of perpendicular line. Um, so to find the Cartesian equation, we need to find the gradient of the dotted line. Find the negative reciprocal of it to find the gradient of the locus line. Um, and then find the midpoint as well. So the gradient is going to be naught minus minus 1 over 3 takes 0, which is a third. So the perpendicular gradient is minus 3. Midpoint is going to be 3 over 2 minus a half i, I suppose then. I just half them because the other values are 0. Um, let's go back up to the top and make a little space up here. So my line equation is going to be y plus a half equals minus 3 x take 3 over 2. And if we expand this for that, we get y equals minus 3x plus 4. So that is my um, that is my locus of the perpendicular, which is the perpendicular bisector. Cool. Right, find the least value. Right, this is kind of tricky. The least value is going to be the perpendicular length from the origin to the line. So we're trying to find the length of that little red line I've drawn there. And the way we're going to do that is by knowing that this is a triangle. Um, cool. So we know, what do we know about this? We know, all right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's fix my sketch because it's not going to be much use. What I'm going to do. Um, let's put some, put some grid in. There you go. Good. Let's do this properly. So we got um where was our point? One was at three. One was at minus i. And we got minus three x plus four was in there. Focus. Something like that. It's not really perfectly clear, whatever. Okay, so we're trying to find the length of, if you like, that line there. Yeah, I guess that's right. So the yellow line and the green line are meant to be parallel. Good, yeah, well done, Caleb. So um, because they're parallel, we knew the gradient of both of these lines was a third. So the equation of the yellow line is going to be y equals third x, because it's intercept is zero. So if I solve y equals a third x with... Um, my line equation, I can then find what this point is, and then we can use that point uh, to, to find this length, this length, and then we can find, well we, can just, well, we don't even need that, we just need the point and then we're done. Cool. So if I set these equal to each other, 1 third x equals minus 3x plus 4, so 10 over 3x equals 4, so x is 12 over 10. So therefore y is a third of that, so y is going to be 4 over 10. So that is 6 fifths, 2 fifths. So we've got across here is 6 fifths, up here 2 fifths. So 6 fifths all squared plus 2 fifths all squared. Square root the whole thing, and we get 2 root 10 over 5 as the least value of the modulus of z. 
Cool. All right, that brings us to the end for today, um, which is our stacking sheet of paper. Cool. All right, that's not bad. Not bad at all. So we've through the first two types of locusts. That's good. That's a really good place to be. Uh, next lecture, we'll be looking at the third type of locust, which I think is the most confusing one. We'll be happy to hear. Um, and then we'll be doing some practice, because that's, that's it for this week. It doesn't really get much much worse than this. And then next week, we're looking at areas on our Gun diagram. And I can't remember what was in the last week's time. But well done, guys. Cool. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye.